Hi and welcome to Distance Time Graphs. Uh, just before we start, a quick reminder that there is a notes charter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we're going to start with a little matching activity, trying to match together a graph with the correct description of that graph. Um, and we're going to begin with Ron jogs in a straight line from his home to a pub and back again. The graphs describe his distance from home as he jogs away on five separate occasions. Match the graph to the correct description. Now the key here is we need to identify some key features of these graphs. And so the very first thing we need to look at, if we have a look at the first, uh, the first graph, we have this diagonal line. Now that line is straight. A straight line means constant speed. So a line like this means that we are traveling at a constant speed. And the reason for that is speed is distance divided by time. And so all the way along this, uh, this line, it is the same. If we find a point that is flat, well, that means the distance is not changing as time goes on. And so a flat line means that you must have stopped. There must be something that has paused the situation. And finally, if we have a look here, this line then descends. And it is a straight line, and so it means it's constant speed. But in this case, the two lines that we've got, the red line, would be a constant speed away from your starting point. And the green line is coming back. So it's a constant speed coming back. And so that is going to help us to decide which uh, of the three, uh, which of the five uh, descriptions matches the graph. So in the first one, Ron has jogged a constant speed away. He's paused and then he's come straight back. So where do we have that? Um, so he runs at a constant speed to the pub and halfway back has a rest. Well, that doesn't seem to match. He runs at a constant speed to the pub and back without stopping. Well, we've said that he definitely stops, so it's not that one. He runs at a constant speed to the pub, has a drink, and runs back at a constant speed. Well, that one would definitely match up. He's run at a constant speed to the pub, he's then paused, and he's then come back at constant speed. So let's have a think about the next one. What is this suggesting? Where is the pause in the second one? Well, the pause is happening on the way to the pub. So he's had a break halfway there. Um, so he runs to the pub having a rest on the way, uh, on the way is what we're looking for. Um, so um, if we have a look at the first one, he runs at a constant speed to the pub and halfway back has a rest. That's not the case, but can we find one that looks like that? Well, a rest on the way back will be this one. There's his rest on the way back. Um, he runs at constant speed to the pub and back without stopping. Well, that can't be this one, but have we got anything else where he's uh, coming, uh, going there and back without stopping? Well, that would be this one. There are no flat parts of that graph. He runs at constant speed to the pub, having a rest on the way, and then runs at a constant speed back. So there's his rest on the way. So that must be this graph. And so we've only got one choice left here. Um, these two must match up, but let's see. He runs to the pub having a rest on the way. Well, there's his rest on the way and then stays at the pub all day. He is stopped when he got to the end. We haven't got him coming back home uh, in that graph. And so the last one must match. And so now we're going to have a look at um, a school bus and it is uh, traveling from school, collecting, uh, collecting students to come back to school. And we just want to describe the journey as we go. Um, and so what we've got here is section A takes us along this line here. Now, we've already uh, talked about what this would mean. It is a straight line uh, moving away. And so for A, we have travels at constant speed. And um, what we can also tell there, we can tell some extra information now. We can see how far they actually traveled. Because if we have a look, we started zero miles from school. At the end of A, we are six miles from school. So traveled 
constant speed, six miles. We can get a little bit extra information. Up B, this is a plateau, it's a uh, flat line. And so what must be happening at between A and B? Well, the bus has stopped. And so it must be picking up some students um, at the bus stop. Next, we go from B to C. And again, this is a straight line. So we know it's constant speed again. But also what we can actually say here is we can say something about that speed because if we compare it to the line at the start this line a to b uh, sorry from uh, zero to a in comparison to the line b to c well zero to a was more steep and so the steep line the steeper the line the faster you are traveling and so from b to c it's actually slower than zero to A. We can say that because the line is less steep. Between C and D, well, the line is not steep at all. It actually has a gradient of zero, and that is because they have stopped again. So because it is a flat line, they have stopped. And then finally, we get D to E. Now, a common mistake here is to say that this um, uh, this bus is actually slowing down because the line is going downwards but that is not what a, um, a negative gradient actually suggests in this situation in a distance time graph a negative line just means we returned home or returned in this case to school but can we get any more information can we actually calculate the actual speed at each stage of the journey and so what I want to do is I want to look at each of these sections individually. And so at A, how do you find speed? Well, speed is distance divided by time. So what distance has been travelled? Well, they have travelled a distance of six miles and it needs to be divided by the time. Now, in this case, if you have a look at the scale, this is in hours, and so the amount of time that they travelled, in this case, is actually a quarter of an hour, or 0 0.25. Um, so this is 6, and I'm just going to change this to a divide. So 6 divided by a quarter. How do we divide by a quarter? Well, we um, actually multiply by 4, so 6 times 4 will be 24 miles per hour at part b the bus is not moving and so the speed at b would have to be zero miles per hour from b to c now in our previous uh, previous question we actually already said that this is slower than the first section so let's see how much slower how far have they traveled well at this point they were at six miles and they traveled to 12 miles so they've gone six miles again but in this case it was in half an hour so that's going to be six divided by a half and how do we divide by a half we times by two and so in that section we actually only did 12 miles per hour we did half the speed at d again it is a flat line and so D is another zero miles per hour. And then finally, if we are dealing with from D to E, how far has the uh, bus traveled in that time? Well, it went from 12 miles away back to the school. So they traveled 12 miles. How long did it take? Well, it took three quarters of an hour because it's taken three little squares here so that is divided by three quarters if i want to work that value out that's going to be 12 times four over three using our dividing uh, dividing by fractions method copy change flip so 12 times four is 48 over three well that is 16 miles per hour 
Now the last question we've got about the bus is calculating the average speed of the entire journey. Now, if we are asked for average speed, what that means is taking into account the total distance and the total time. And so that is how we are going to get average speed. So total distance divided by total time. And so in this case, we know that the bus traveled 12 miles to its furthest point and then 12 miles back to get to the school. And so in total, they traveled 24 miles. How long did it take in total? Well, it started here at zero and went one, two and a quarter hours. So two and a quarter. And so if we did this one, you might want to use a calculator for this. That's absolutely fine. It's going to be 24 divided by two and a quarter and 24 divided by two and a quarter is 10.6 recurring miles per hour. So overall, they were traveling at 10, uh, just under 11 miles per hour. And a lot of that comes from these brakes. The brakes have obviously slowed down the average speed across the entire journey. And so at the end, we're just gonna look at some interpretation of these graphs. So on this one, we've actually got three different people involved. Uh, we have Sam as the blue line, Joshua as the red line, and Hannah as the black line. And so all we want to do is with this diagram, um, decide if we can uh, come up with some answers. So who is traveling by car? Well, if we are traveling by car, what would we expect about those people? Well, we would expect that they were actually moving very quickly. Um, and so if they are moving very quickly, their line is going to be steep. And so the steepest line we have is actually Joshua's line. Joshua's line is uh, steeper than Sam's. And so the suggestion would be that Joshua would be traveling by car. Now it is possible that it might be Sam. Um, Joshua might just be very, very quick um, at some other mode of transport. Uh, but as Joshua's is the steepest, he would be the one that we would expect. Then who is traveling by bicycle? Well, if we have a look um, then at Sam and Hannah, again, um, we would assume Sam uh, is uh, faster than Hannah and therefore Sam is most likely to be traveling by bicycle. Who is furthest away after two hours? Well this one requires us to actually use a little line for two hours. Well we can say at two hours Hannah is 40 miles away. If we keep going Sam is 80 miles and if we keep going Joshua is actually 100 miles. So Joshua is furthest away after two hours. After five hours though, if we do the same, at five hours, Hannah and Joshua are actually at exactly the same place. They are uh, 100 miles away. So if we keep going, we then see that Sam is by far the furthest away. They are 200 miles away. So Sam would come next. Who travels the fastest? Now, in this question, it all depends what we actually mean by fastest. Um, if we were just dealing with at any one point, then Joshua would be the fastest person uh, because they uh, were doing, uh, they did 100 miles in two hours at the very start and they had the steepest line. But if we actually take the entire journey into account, well, Sam traveled uh, 200 miles in five hours. That would be 40 miles per hour all the way along. Whereas Joshua only traveled 100 miles in five hours. They were much slower. They actually only did 20 miles an hour. And so overall, and that's an important uh, word in there, overall, it was Sam. What might have happened to Joshua? Well, um, the first thing I'll look at with Joshua is what has actually happened in his graph. He's traveled at constant speed. 
um, for two hours and then stopped. So what might have happened? Um, well, this is entirely up to you uh, it's, uh, to come up with a situation. You may say he's driving his car, so it might have broken down at 100 miles, and that's why he hasn't moved. It may be that actually he was just meeting Hannah at a certain point, and he got there a lot earlier. So he travelled there, and he just stopped and waited for Hannah. Anything could have possibly happened in that situation. Um, the last one is to calculate Hannah's speed in miles per hour. And so with Hannah, the key here is we need to know for Hannah how far has she travelled. And so she has travelled 100 miles. And how long did it take her? Well, it took her five hours. And so if we do 100 divided by five, we get 20 miles per hour. And you can actually see that that is true all the way along. Because if we take one hour and see how far she'd gone, it was 20 miles. After another hour, it was another 20 miles. Another hour, another 20, another hour, another 20, another hour, another 20. Every hour, she travelled 20 miles. So 20 miles per hour. And so we're going to end with the exam question. And this came from the Edexcel paper in November 2017, and it was on higher paper 2. So we've been told here is part of a distance time graph for a car's journey. And question A is between which two times does the car, uh, car travel at its greatest speed? Give a reason for your answer. Now at this point you might think, well I need to work out the speed of this first section and then work out the speed of the second section and the speed of the third section. But actually you don't need to do that. As long as you can give a good reason you're going to get the marks. And what have we said about um, speed in terms of what is the greatest speed? Well, we said that the steeper the line, the faster you are traveling. And therefore, this first section between 0 and 20 seconds is the fastest because it's got the steepest line. And that is the best possible answer to this question. As long as you are describing the steepness of the line, um, that is telling you that it is the fastest speed. And then it says work out this greatest speed. So they're saying, you've just told me that the first section was the fastest. Well, what was the speed at that point? Well, let's have a look. We need the distance travelled. So in this case, we just need to read off what this value here is. Um, there are 10 squares between 200 and 400. And so each of these little squares is worth 20. And so that means that we travelled 360 metres. And we did that in 20 seconds. And so, very quickly, cross out the zeros. 36 divided by 2 is going to be 18. And here, very importantly, the units that we need to use. Well, this is metres divided by seconds. So metres per second. 18 metres per second.